ado, cheers for stopping by. Because in this video, we are going to look at a very, very special piece. And I have been waiting a seriously long time to get this on camera. In fact, it's been over two years. Now I've thought long and hard about how I'm going to tell this story and you know it's a difficult one because what I have had to do to this knife is take a custom knife and basically do an unofficial collaboration with some other makers to get it to where I want it to be. Now I have nothing against the original maker of this knife, uh, it's just there was a few issues with it that I didn't particularly like and we could never get to an agreement where uh, he was going to sort the knife out for me. Now, I have got nothing against the maker, like I say, but I'm going to try and condense the story as quickly as possible so I don't bore you to death with it. So let's first have a look at the final finished product, shall we? This is Tom Ferry's Radical, and I call this one the Ancient Rivals Radical. And as you can see, it's absolutely spectacular. This thing is the crown jewel in my collection. Point and tip. And rightfully so. But this knife is not original. There are things that have been changed from the knife that Tom sent me. So let's get into this thing, shall we? Let's try and condense what happened. So two years ago, I commissioned this knife from Tom. And I was very, very specific about what I wanted. I asked for an epic engraving, Timascus bolsters. I asked for the engraving to be on the back so that I could have an engraving over the backspacer. I asked for the blade to have a hand rub satin finish. I asked for a pocket clip. And I gave him artistic license as far as what he did with the design for the engraving. But I was very specific about everything. What I wanted the liners to look like, how I wanted the blade to be finished, how I wanted the spine to be finished, how I wanted the time maskers to be finished. I was also very, very specific about the engraving. And the one thing I asked for, I said, you go ahead and design whatever you want, but I want copper inlay. The theme that I gave him was dragon versus samurai. And I wanted some kind of copper inlay, maybe in the dragon's uh, claws and maybe teeth or some of the scales or whatever, okay? Now, he basically went away and, uh, and said, because I had asked for the pocket clip, he decided to, and this is what, he doesn't usually do this. Usually, the, these back scales that he does are usually 50-50. So it's 50% bolster and then 50% the, the engraving plate uh, for him to engrave. But because I asked for the pocket clip, it evolved into him deciding to do an epic engraving on the front of the knife. My original thought was it was going to be maybe a dragon on the front and a samurai on the back with the dragon's tail kind of wrapping around the the, uh, the samurai on this side. But because of the clip, obviously he can't do something really uh, detailed on this side because the clip would obscure it, okay? But I was very specific about the clip. I wanted a clip. So he came up with the idea of obviously putting both characters on the same side. And that evolved into him creating something epic by increasing the size of the plate. So he'd never done this before. What he, he did was he made it so it was 70% um, bolster, uh, sorry, sorry, 70% engraving plate and 30% bolster. I would That's how I would split it up in, in my mind. That's how I look at it. 
So he went away and he uh, he made the knife and did the contouring and all of his uh, knives, whether whether they have uh, half and half scale, bolster, whatever, they're all contoured the same. So it's just, as you can see, the, the, the plate is contoured. You see it's thicker at the end there and thinner at the sides, so it's rounded. Okay, it's, it's contoured. And the uh, scale at the front, the bolster at the front, sorry, um, was also, sorry, hit the camera there, was also um, rounded and perfectly finished. Okay. As you can probably guess, these are the original bolsters. So he started making the knife and he started putting some pictures online and I immediately noticed that he'd already kind of skipped the phase where he does the copper inlay. So I contacted him and said, where's my copper inlay? And he said, I'm not giving you copper inlay. Now I was very upset about that because I was specific about it. I'm the customer, it's what I asked for. And he said, the reason I don't want to do copper is because the Timascus is going to be so vibrant that it might look a bit gaudy and a little bit tacky having vibrant Timascus and then kind of copper. And he says, I can give you a more detailed engraving without doing inlays. So I was upset by it, but he'd already started the engraving process, so I had to go with it, okay? So fair enough, he goes ahead and does the engraving. And yes, I think you would agree that he came up with something absolutely spectacular. Right, just absolutely amazing, amazing work. But when he posted pictures of the finished product, the uh, Timascus was horrible. He'd basically taken the heat so high that it had gone through all the vibrant colours and it had gone to these kind of whites and washed out blues and uh, almost going to like yellowy colours and I hated it. And I told him and he'd already spent too long on the knife for the price he'd quoted me. He'd taken way too long doing the engraving. He'd gone over. So his original price, now he's probably losing money. So he ended up polishing the Timascus again and redoing it a kind of purple, uh, golden bronze colour. And I hated it again. And I also could see scratches uh, from the, the sanding in the bolsters. And I hated that as well. But I kind of could tell that he wanted to just get the knife out the door. He was obviously, you know, he'd, he'd gone over on his time with it. So he sent it to me. And when I received it, uh, I immediately opened the knife oh, and I'd asked for a hand rub satin blade. And instead, what it was, he, it was a hand rub satin, but he'd also stone washed it. And what it had looked like, it looked like he'd started the hand rub satin and then run out of time and then thrown it in the tumbler. And now I've never seen that before. I've never seen somebody do a hand rub satin and then throw it in the tumbler because they're both scratches. You've got either a hand rub satin, which is, you know, directional scratches or a tumbler which is a, a tumbled finish which is obviously you know crazy all over the place scratches and i hated it absolutely hated it also there were like these little uh, scratches uh, vertical scratches near the ricasso um, loads of them where he basically it looked like he'd been doing that and every time he'd gone back like that do, 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 had built up all these kind of vertical lines so it looked terrible absolutely horrible um and didn't like the uh the bolsters didn't like the way he'd finished the clip uh, the sides of the clip were not nicely finished there was like blemishes and all kinds of stuff and like i say it was a beautiful knife it's just um, a little bit of fit and finish and um you know kind of been rushed that's my opinion on it and he admitted that you know he said that yes he, he, he'd probably rushed the knife uh, to get it out the door because he'd gone over on the engraving totally cool now, in the end, what ended up happening was I was very reluctant to send the knife back. Trying to send it from England to America and then having him sending it back to me is a big deal. It's a big risk. So in the end, I decided to, uh, you know, do things myself. And um, I could never get the bolsters finished how I liked. I, I just, I think it was... I didn't like the Timascus. Uh, it was, the pattern on one side was very dense. The other side was very open. They didn't match. Um, and they never anodized right. They never kind of colored the way I wanted them to color. Uh, and in the end, uh, I ended up, in my own fault, I ended up making a few mistakes with the bolsters and ruining the fit and finish. So I completely admit that. Uh, it was two years ago and I made mistakes, a rookie mistake. Okay. Um, and he told me that to send him the blade back. But in the end, uh, all he did was he just offered a full refund. Uh, he just said, look, you know, send the knife back and 
I've got somebody else lined up to buy it. I'll give you your full refund and we'll call it a day. And I was very, very close to doing it because I was unhappy with the knife. Uh, you know, I was kind of, you know, I was bitter about not having my copper inlays. And I wasn't even appreciating the, the engraving at the time because I was so kind of bitter about the fact that I didn't get this copper inlay. Uh, and then, you know, I, I have a blade that's horribly finished. I just don't like the finish of it. And then I've got bolsters and a clip that I can't get right. And uh, yeah, it was just, it was very frustrating. And I was about to send it back when something inside me said, you will regret it. This knife was commissioned for you. You commissioned it. It's in, it's in existence because you commissioned it. You were the one who came up with the theme. You were the one who pushed Tom in a certain direction for him to do this. And it's your knife. And I knew that if I sent it back and then he went and kind of resorted the blade out and did every, got the knife looking amazing uh, and then somebody else had it in their collection and started posting it on Instagram or did YouTube videos for it, I knew I would regret it for the end of my days, you know what I mean? And I knew that I would never get an opportunity to own a knife like this again. I always wanted a knife like this with some kind of an amazing dragon engraving. And so I decided, even though I thought that maybe I might just hate the knife forever, because I'm, you know, not hate, but be unhappy with it. I decided that I was going to keep it. And I was going to try my best to sort it out myself. Now, like I say, I've got no issue with Tom whatsoever. Even though after our dealings, he blocked me uh, on Instagram. Like I say, I have no problem with him whatsoever. We, you know, we had a bit of a disagreement. But that's as far as I'm going to go. I'm not going to go into any more detail about the other things that were going on with the knife. Or other things I worked on. Um there's no need you know i'm not bashing him in the slightest he created an amazing amazing knife okay but it had some issues that i needed to sort out so what i did was i first um had the blade that i needed sorting out and i had a relationship with a maker here in england where he'd already done a couple of different uh, blades for me where he refinished a couple of blades one in particular was my gavin hawk tangent he hand rubbed it for me so I contacted him, and his name's Phil Harvey. And if you know who he is, he makes huge, amazing, overbuilt folders. The Gladius and this kind of massive cleaver he's just done. Uh, incredible stuff. And he does an amazing hand rub. And I asked him, would you be able to refinish the blade? And if possible, any chance you could put a platinum tip on it for me? He said, send it to me. I'll see. Anyway, he sent it back as a surprise. I didn't even expect it back, and it just arrived at the, through my door. And he'd done it. He'd put a beautiful satin finish and he'd been able to put a platinum tip and he said what he had to do is he had to actually build a rig which allowed him to put the platinum tip on the blade and it's just amazing absolutely incredible look at that beautiful really nice satin finish the swedge is high polished as well the spine is highly polished just gorgeous absolutely gorgeous so then i had the bolsters to sort out so i begged and pleaded with edison who i've had a relationship with for a few years now of shark knife co and he was reluctant to take the knife on you know it's not something he does and he will ever ever do again but he but once he saw what i'd done to the original bolsters he said yeah send me the knife i'll see what i can do that was nine months ago. And he basically, uh, you know, put it off for nine months because once he got it, he just couldn't figure out a way to do it, to replicate the original bol uh, the original bolsters. He said, you know, to make the original bolsters and to contour them like the originals and to get everything fit and finish the same would mean touching with the grinder and everything, with all the parts around it. And he said it would completely damage the knife. He can't do it. And he had no idea what to do. I begged and begged and begged. In the end, he got back to me um, a few weeks ago and he said, I'm going to have to send you the knife back. And I got so upset and I was like, this is unfair. And I basically emotionally blackmailed him. And Ed, if you're watching this, I'm sorry, but it had to be done because in the end, what you produced was magic, absolute magic. Um, I begged and pleaded. And we came up with an idea of maybe uh, doing a smaller bolster so that it wasn't touching any of the sides and maybe floating it and maybe doing some vents and you know all kinds of stuff. In the end, he said, because of his uh, uh, prices, you know, his, his hourly rate, he said, how about we just try first doing a pivot collar and just getting a bolster put on there? I said, yeah, OK, you choose the materials. And he it took him 16 hours to do this. 
and what he what he's created is absolutely insane. So it's the all the other radicals have nice fit and finish, but they're all just contoured the same. Okay, you know the the scale and the bolster, everything's just contoured, and it's just just one. Look, it could be just one piece, all just contoured and rounded. This has a different style because it's like it fits perfectly. It looks like it belongs on the knife, but the bolsters have got their own style. As you can see, they're chamfered off and they're squared off. The fit and finish is just the same as the original. Absolutely perfect, the way that he's done them. The sides have got a chamfer on them, as you can see. The tops have got a really thick chamfer there and there. And then what he's done, he's put three facets. So you can see that. You can see the top is flat and then the sides have got flats as well. So it's one, two, three facets. And then, so this is Timascus, and then the collars are Mokotai. Different direction, that one's diagonal, this one's uh, horizontal. And it's press fit. So he press fit the collars in there, and then he goes in and obviously finishes everything and does the facets. So the fit and finish, it's like it's just one piece, but it's actually Timascus and Mokotai. Look at that. And he finished them beautifully. No scratches. Highly polished Timascus before he heat anodized. So it's just perfect. And I love how squared off it is. It's just got such character. I mean, look at that. Love how that, that kind of pops up at the end there. Beautiful fit and finish. It's just perfect. Absolutely perfect. The colouring is perfect. Everything. The pivot... Is a custom pivot by a maker called Ross and Grilly. Uh, I had this as a spare and it just happened to fit this knife perfectly. So that's a unique piece for this knife as well. That tri steel pivot. And then the amazing pivot collar, the amazing bolsters. Absolutely incredible. So when the knife came back, I then refinished the pocket clip, made sure that it was finished to the same standard as the bolsters. And I was able to colour it beautifully, as you can see. Just epic. The sides are perfectly finished as well. And then I polished and anodized the liners. And then was able to remove the colouring from any of the engraving. So it just saw so the actual dragon uh, tail and the scales all stand out. And then you've got the blues in between. Absolutely freaking gorgeous. I went for kind of a bluey purpley colour. So there's some blues and some purples in there to kind of match all the blues and purples of the clip and the uh, the bolsters. Tiny little screws which have been anodized so they're really hidden in there. And every time I look at this engraving, I see something different. It's just incredible. Like the guys, the Savurai's clothes behind the mouth before the mouth is engraved there. All these little bits where he's dug it out, you know, so it, it kind of creates that 3D effect, like in there, where the claw comes out, where he's grabbing his foot there. The sheath there. Love this, this whisker that kind of comes off there. And then this bit of the, when it breaks the barrier, and then it, it kind of does this amazing little feature there. I mean, look at this. It's just one of a kind. So epic. Love it on this side as well. You know, not as detailed because of the clip, but just it works perfectly. You know, like like the, the, the tail is just wrapping around the blade, wrapping around the knife, wrapping around the handle. <sighs> just gorgeous. And this thing, for me, is just perfect in every way now. I got an engraver to engrave ancient... I call this knife the Ancient Rivals Radical. And so he engraved Ancient Rivals in there for me. That's Tom Ferry's uh, signature there. The action is insane. Ridiculously smooth. Great detent. Solid. Solid lockup. Fast action. Now, that wasn't how it arrived. I had to tweak the action. But I'm not going to go any, any more into it than that. It's just I had to do a little bit of work to get it to where it needs to be. I had to flatten the detent um, ball so that the detent 
uh, engaged completely. I don't know if you're going to be able to see it. Completely engaged into the hole. I had to just slightly increase the size of the hole. Um, but the action now is insane. So yes, I would say in total, uh, including Tom, uh, Edison, myself, Phil, uh, the engraver who, who did the inside of there and just did a little bit of topping up on some of the shading um, that I'd kind of wore away after doing a bit of polishing. Um, I would say six different craftsmen have influenced this knife. I mean, yes, okay, it's just the pivot for one craftsman and a little bit of engraver for another craftsman, but the main people are Phil Harvey for the blade, Edison Brahas for the bolsters, and obviously Tom Ferry for the knife overall. And this thing is just insane. What a gorgeous piece. This will absolutely never, ever leave my collection. Once this arrived back, and I finally got it all done, oh, the feeling of this knife now that it gives me is what I wanted two years ago. I finally got that feeling, and I am so happy that I kept it. Because, I mean, I did, I would never have imagined it would ever look like this. It's so much better than I could have ever imagined. It's such a special piece now. And it is something that is a family heirloom piece. That's my, that was my goal from the very beginning, to commission a knife that was so beautiful that I would love, and then I would be able to pass on to my kids... And they would be able to look at it and say, you know, Dad loved this knife and it's just a family heirloom piece that will stay in the family. That's the whole point of it. No matter how much it's worth, this is what I wanted. This is why I wanted this knife to be as beautiful and perfect as it is. And it is. The finishes of this thing, the fit and finish, the colouring, everything, for me, amazing. I just absolutely love that Timascus. I love that Mocha tie. On the pivot collars, love the finish to the clip. The engraving is incredible. Oh, I just I think it's incredible, and I am very very happy and privileged to have this in my collection. And I think you'll agree, it's absolutely stunning. All right, guys. Thanks for checking this video out, and I'm sure I'll see you uh, you know on another one. I'm due to go in for spinal surgery in exactly two weeks' time, so maybe I might get a couple more videos in there. If not, hopefully I will see you um, when I see you after the surgery. All right, guys, thanks for watching, and I'll uh, I'll check you later. See ya.